Right, well, we're looking at this, uh, the speculative uh, demand for money, okay? Now, let's, let's look at this. This is called the critical interest rate, okay? Uh, this is the level that people will be at least willing to hold some uh, amount of uh, money. Now, assuming you you increase your your interest rate even by the smallest inch above the critical rate, no one is going to hold uh, any any money at all. Okay, because for this point now, people will be willing that the interest rate is high enough and that after some time, there's going to be a reduction in the level of uh, in interest rate. Okay, so uh, previously we stated that people try to hold it when the interest rate is high because they know, they anticipate that in the near future, the interest rate is going to fall so that there's going to be an increase in the face value of uh, the uh, asset. okay? So uh, when the interest rate is above the critical rate, no one is willing to hold any money for the speculative purpose. They will all be holding bonds, okay? They will all be holding bonds. Um, can you come again? Okay, what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, uh, we are trying to look at uh, the demand for money, the speculative demand for money, how it depends on the level of interest rate. And we, we, we call this level of interest rate, the critical interest rate. This is where we, we stand. We are assuming this is like a z z zero line. Okay, so this is what we use to measure where, whether people are going to hold money or whether they are going to uh, hold bonds. But before we look at this, uh, we've gotten an idea that people only hold uh, bonds when, when, when the interest rate is what is high. Okay, and these individuals are going to consider the interest rate as a high interest rate, which can induce them to go and hold bond when it is above the level of um, this critical interest rate, okay? So you just assuming that at the critical interest rate, the person was, uh, was having 100 Ghana and he was using 50 Ghana for bonds and then he was holding uh, 50 Ghana. With an increase in the interest rate above the critical point, now they will not hold any money at all. They will put all their money into bonds. Okay, so the demand, the speculative de demand for money will become zero. And the reason is that now that the interest rate is high, they're anticipating that in the near future, the interest rate is going to fall so that they will have a higher face value of their bond, okay? But in a case where the interest rate also falls below the critical point, the critical interest rate, they will, hold, they, they, they will only hold money because they know that if they hold the bond now, in the near future, the interest rate is going to increase again, which means they are going to have a capital loss. So when the interest rate falls below- Hello. Marvin. Yeah, I'm a bit confused. Are they inversely related or positively related? What and what? Which which relationship are you talking about? The interest rate and the speculative demand for money. Uh, it, it's not negative. The network is bad. Oh. Mm. Okay, if you can hear me, what I'm trying to say is, whenever there's an increase in interest rates, okay, when is, when the, 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 there's an increase above the critical rate, now interest rates is very high. So we we'll all go and buy bonds. And buy bonds means that you are holding less money. 
But if what we are trying to say here is when the interest rate is high above the critical rate, we will not hold any money at all. We won't hold any money at all. Okay? The speculative demand for money will be zero. The interest rate is high, and there's a reduction in the speculative demand for money. That is an inverse relationship. And we are also saying that we are also saying that when the interest rate falls below the critical value, now interest rate is very low, which means that we will not be holding bonds at all. We will shift into the holding of more money. Now, because of a decrease in interest rate, we are now holding more money for the speculative purpose. So there is uh, an inverse relationship between uh, the interest rate and then the demand for money. So that is what we have here. This is the care for the money de demand for the speculative purpose. So with a higher interest rate, we hold less amount of money. And then with a lower interest rate, we hold uh, quite a lot of uh, money for the speculative purpose. See that we, people speculate. They anticipate that this is what is going to happen in, in the future. That's why we call it the speculative motive. Okay, that's why we call it the spec, speculative motive. So uh, we've been able to show that there is an inverse relationship between uh, demand for money for speculative purpose and then the interest rate. Any question? Yes. Hello. 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 Hey, Yuma. Yuma. Um. Um. Yeah, um, you, you ma. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask that you Oh, you ma, I can't, I can't see. 